Hi, my name is Leandro Facchinetti, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to record videos in Reaper. Well, recording videos in Reaper isn't really possible, but what I did is a way to bridge Reaper and OBS. So we will be recording the video in OBS, but it will show up in Reaper as if you were recording it in Reaper. So you can kind of fake it as recording video in Reaper. Why would you want to do this? Well, it depends if you are already a Reaper user or if you are already an OBS user or if you're maybe a user of both. If you are a Reaper user, then the advantage is pretty obvious. You can record video in OBS, but you cannot record video in Reaper. And this bridge between the two allows you to record video in Reaper, which is something that you may want to do if you're recording yourself playing an instrument and you want to do a video of that. So you want to do one of those uh, musical, musical videos of you playing. It becomes really easy because everything is already in place in the Reaper timeline. Or if you're recording this kind of video tutorial thing, then I think Reaper is one of the best ways to edit the video because of things like truncate silence and the multicam thing that I did in the other videos in this channel. You can check that out. And if you are an OBS user, then you may want to do this recording of audio in Reaper. So you are going to still record your video in OBS, but you are going to record the audio in Reaper, which gives you some advantages. First, the routing is much easier if you want to record different microphones or different sources like the sound your computer is making. Then you can record those in Reaper very easily in different tracks. While in OBS, you have to configure things and you don't have as many options in terms of routing of the signal. And then you have a, a movie file that has many tracks and you have to split that out somehow in order to be able to edit the video. And that can be annoying. You have to run that through another processing step before you can throw the files into a video processor, a video editor. But if you're recording in this duo mode with OBS and Reaper, you already have WAV files to work with from the get-go. And that's another advantage, really. You're recording in WAV, while when you're recording in OBS, you can record in WAV, but that is annoying because you have to use FFmpeg to record, which can be super slow and it also loses footage sometimes, at least it did for me. But if you're recording in Reaper, you're recording in the highest quality possible, recording in WAV, not in AAC or some other lossy format. You are recording in WAV from the get-go, super easy to work with, and also the highest quality you can record in. Before we jump into the demonstration, another thing I want to mention is that some people asked me to create a Patreon and a PayPal account so that you can support me. And I did that last week, so if you want to be the first few people to jump into the Patreon and support this channel, then go ahead and do it. The links are below. Anyway, let's go to the demonstration. So I have here Reaper on the top and OBS on the bottom. Neither of the two are recording. And I have this new action I developed called OBS Toggle Recording. And I run that in Reaper and you can see that it started recording in Reaper, but it also started recording here in OBS as well. So this action is bridging between Reaper and OBS, so both are recording right now, and I can stop the recording and then automatically our video pops up here in Reaper with the screen that I was recording. It just shows up here as video in Reaper ready for me to edit straight from OBS. And of course I was recording my screen, but you can record cameras, you can do anything that OBS can do, you can do that, and it's going to drop the file right in Reaper ready for you to edit. And I have to admit that I worked really hard on this. I worked for many, many, many days on this and I couldn't figure out a way to exactly sync the two. So they are off by one frame in this case. And if you care about this, you can always clap in the beginning of the recording and then you can come back here and sync everything perfectly to the frame. I guess it's off by half a frame really in this case. Depending on the case, it, it I couldn't really figure out a way to make this consistent. Depending on the case, it may be off by more than a couple frames. And there are ways to adjust some of these as I will show you later in this video. But you have to be careful here and make sure that everything is in sync. Most of the time it will be, but sometimes you'll have to do some manual adjustment. But nevertheless, at least you'll have the file here already on the timeline, ready for you to just come here and see, oh, it's off by half a frame. Let me correct this. Oh, okay. Now I'm good to edit. And it's like 30 seconds that you're going to lose to sync all your footage instead of having to drop in the file and then put it on the timeline and find the matching clips. 
This is super helpful if you're recording a lot, lots of segments when you're recording songs, and then you can compose everything using uh, some other video processors later. You can put all the videos side by side. If you're doing that sort of thing, then having this action really helps. Okay, so next, if you are interested in this, how do you install it? Below in the, the video description, you're going to find a link that you can use to uh, install this using Repack. So you have to install Repack first. And if you don't know how to do that, the link below will also link to another video by the Reaper blog in which he explains this uh, very clearly. But if you have Repack already installed, all you have to do is come here to import repositories, grab the link from below and paste it here, install all the packages and you're good to go. That's all you have to do. One caveat is that this action should work in all operating systems, but I have only tested this on my Mac. So if you have Windows or Linux and you're running Reaper and OBS and you can help me test this out, it will probably work without any adjustments. But if you are running into problems, then get in touch because I don't have any way to test this. So if you can help me test, uh, it will be excellent. And that's all you have to do in the Reaper site to install this. In OBS, you also have to do something. And that's the thing that actually helps me communicate with OBS through Reaper. And that's to install a tool called WebSockets. Uh, it's called OBS WebSockets. The link to install this will also be in the description below. It's available for every operating system. You just have to follow the instructions there. If you're on a Mac and you're using Homebrew, you can use just... Uh, brew install obs websocket it's available there and you can also install obs and reaper so you can install all the dependencies for this in one command anyway you can follow the instructions there and install this too it's super popular it's one of the most popular uh, plugins for obs and when you're uh, have been installed make sure that it's enabled that's the default make sure it's in this port that's also the default you don't have to change any of the settings just make sure that they look like this and you're good to go it's the websocket is already running and reaper will be able to connect and communicate with this and if reaper cannot communicate with obs you will see an error message and you can follow the instructions there and now the last thing i want to talk about before i end this video is how to tweak some advanced settings in this action. So the way to do this is first you have to come here to options and then show Reaper resource path in Explorer Finder. And that's going to show you the uh, files that are your Reaper configuration. You have to come in here and find in the scripts, the script that is the OBS one. So it's under my name, utility, and you'll have to scroll and find the OBS one. It's right here, so I can create a copy of this file and name it whatever I want. So I'll name like, I am a user OBS toggle recording. And the reason why you'll have to do this is that if I update these actions and you have some customization, you would lose your customization when I update the actions. But now that you have your own copy under your own name, you will not lose, uh, the, the, your, your action will be there forever. Anyway, so once you have that copy, you come here to new action and load rescript and you find your copy. So it should be right here. And then you open that. And now this is your copy of the action. No one will ever touch it. You can edit this action. And here, the first thing you will find in the source code, and that's why I say that this is advanced. You have to touch the source code. You'll find a bunch of configuration uh, parameters that you probably will never have to touch. But if you have to touch them, they're right here. So the first thing is the address to the OBS instance. Usually you were running OBS in the same machine as you were running Reaper, but if you're running OBS in a different machine, you can still connect to that other machine using OBS WebSocket as mentioned in the installation instructions. And here you can give the address. So if you have a different machine that is not your own machine, you can put the address, maybe the IP address of that machine. And here the port, and usually by default, the OBS WebSocket will be running on port 44, 44, but you can change that in OBS, so you can change that here as well. And if you set some passwords to that OBS WebSocket instance, you can put the password in here and that will work just fine. 
If you're recording in an extension that is not MKV, for whatever reason, you can change that here. And that's necessary because this script has to find your recording. So it needs to know what is the extension of the recording. The default in OBS and also the recommended extension is MKV. So that's why this is here. But if you're recording directly in MP4, it's not recommended, but you can do it. Uh, you may lose footage if your computer crashes in the middle of a recording when you're recording in MP4. But if you're recording in, 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 in MP4, you can just put MP4 here. Latency is probably the one that is the hardest to configure. But if you find that every time you're recording, your recording is off by a certain amount. Let's say you record and you see that it's always uh, delayed by one second then you can come here and put one second here or minus one second, depending on the direction of the delay, who is late and who is early, OBS or Reaper. You can use this parameter. And then every time you record, when I put the OBS recording in the timeline, I will offset it by this amount. And of course, by default, it's zero. You don't need any adjustments, but if you need to do that, it's a super advanced thing and you have to try many recordings to figure this number out for your setting but that's something you can do. And then another thing is this track name. I default by calling the track OBS, but if you want some other name, you can put another name here. Also, when you are recording multiple times, if there is already an OBS track, all the recordings will go on that track. But if you want to have different tracks, so maybe you're recording yourself multiple times playing different instruments, and you want all those recordings. You don't want a recording to override an existing one. You want them to go into new tracks. And that's something you can do by setting this to true. And when you when you do this, all recordings will go to new tracks. So even if you have already a, a track called OBS, it will go into a new track, which will also be called OBS. So you'll have multiple OBS tracks. If you want your recordings to be on a subfolder, so currently I have a folder here uh, in which I'm doing the demonstration, I have a couple of recordings and they live right next to the Reaper project itself. But some people like to organize their media in subfolders, like uh, maybe recordings or OBS. I, I think that would be a good name for this. So if you want all your recordings to go into this subfolder, instead of going directly in the project folder, you can put that here and all your recordings will always, always go to this folder. Make sure that the folder exists though. Now, next, there are a couple of timeouts that you can use, and usually you don't have to tweak this. That's why the settings come last. But if you are, you're running into problems, uh, and if you run into a problem, the timeout will show an error when you're recording or when you're trying to record and failing, really. And if you see that you're always running into that error, maybe because your machine is too slow and the recording doesn't start, then you can tweak these recordings. This is 5,000 uh, 5, milliseconds, this execute timeout is how long a command can execute for. Uh, that's in milliseconds. This one is in seconds. So that's how long we wait until OBS stops recording. Because when you hit stop recording in OBS, it doesn't stop recording immediately. It has to take some time to process things. And I wait 10 seconds for that to happen. If you find that in your recordings, it's always taking longer. You can come here and tweak this, but this is a pretty generous timeout. You'll probably never run into errors with this. And of course, keep in mind that if you are doing these kinds of tweaks and adjustments, anytime I update the action, you may want to copy and paste things over from the source of this action to your custom version. And you are going to see when you update Repack a message listing all the packages that were updated. If you see updates to OBS, uh, then you may want to copy things over and make sure that it's still all working and maybe look at new configuration settings that may have been introduced. Anyway, it's up to you. If you're doing these tweaks, then you have to maintain your copy yourself. There is no better way for me to maintain those tweaks for you. And that is it. That's how you record video in Reaper. And that's how you use Reaper as an audio recording device if you are an OBS user. I hope you find this helpful. I hope you like this. And if you are making interesting things with this, make sure to send them to me because I'm always amused by the things you create using my tools. 
Make sure you subscribe to this channel if you're interested in this sort of thing. And also make sure you watch the videos that are going to come up right after this one if you're interested in learning how I did this. I'm going to do a code review showing all the code to make this work. It's probably one of the most sophisticated Reaper actions I have ever created. It needs to communicate with a command line tool that I also created. So all for sorts of fun stuff there. And if you're interested in that, make sure you subscribe. And also, if you want to support the channel, now I do have a Patreon and a PayPal account, so you can send me recurring support or a one-time support. If you're finding these things that I create useful, make sure you support the work. And I see you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.